Hello, Pittsburgh. Welcome to Night Talk Get to the Point. I am Dr. Audrey Guskey from Duquesne University, and we're absolutely thrilled to have you on board today. Great to have you here. We've got such a wonderful topic, such great ideas, and such great guests. We have hot topics and cool guests, or maybe I should say cool guests and hot topics, uh, and we're excited to share the evening with you today. Um, a lot of you know that I've been studying consumer trends for over 25 years, and I know what you want. You want consumer news, you want to know what's happening in the marketplace, you want to know what's important to you and your family as far as budgeting and households. We've got all that information today for you. We want to share with you basically how to save money, how to save time, and how to be a better consumer. Things are a little bit rocky out there as far as uh, being a consumer nowadays, and, and we want to try to get you through some of the rough, rough waters that we've got. Let me introduce you to our guests tonight. We have Robert Dye, who is the Vice President and Senior Economist at PNC Financial Services Group. He analyzes and forecasts financial and economic trends. Robert, welcome. Good to have you here. Good to be here, Audrey. Thank you. Uh, we have Joe Dentisi. A lot of you may know the name, Joe Dentisi. Joe is the owner, along with his brother, Tom, uh, of um, Coons Markets and they've got seven markets, and they've been in the grocery business for 40 years now, and uh, they are, n unfortunately, the only independent grocer, um, grocery store in the area. Um, so it's good to have you here, Joe. Glad Always to be great here. To, to talk to you. And we have Tim Scully, who was from the Pittsburgh Business Times. Tim's been with the Pittsburgh Business Times for eight and a half years, and basically his expertise is in retail development, hospitality, and urban policy. So we've got a fabulous panel with great expertise and great energy. These are experts that really have the pulse on the Pittsburgh area and the Pittsburgh marketplace, and it's just wonderful um, that you're here to join us. Uh, as an educator, my job is to educate you, inform you, enlighten you, and also entertain you, and hopefully we'll be able to do all of that fun stuff tonight. So let's get started. The first thing we want to talk about, the thing that's on everybody's mind, obviously, is high gas prices. What do we do? Um, we've been struggling with this for quite a while now, and it's been affecting all of our lives, and what they found, a lot of consumers, from some research that's been done, have said 65% of shoppers are spending less on non-essentials. Half of us are eating out less, half of us are doing less as far as entertainment goes, and only 20% of us are saying that there's no change as a result of the high gas prices. Are we consuming less, and what does it mean, and how can we perhaps conserve and save some money as far as fuel prices go? Robert, let me turn that over to you first of all, and since your degrees are in energy management and uh, petroleum engineering, mm -hmm. so you seem to have a great expertise educational-wise and background-wise. What's happening out there? Why are prices so high, and what can we do? Well, uh, gasoline prices, as, as we all know, are, are skyrocketing, well, well in excess of $3.50, $3.60 a gallon. High gasoline tax, uh, prices act like a tax on the consumer, really. When you're spending $50, $60, $70, $100 dollars to fill up your car and you're used to spending maybe $20 or $30, dollars, that means you have 60 or 70 less dollars to spend on other things. So you do have to cut back on some of those discretionary items. Mm -hmm. And have you noticed that consumers are doing that? Yes, uh, definitely we are uh, seeing that. Uh, one thing that we're seeing consumers cut back on are really big ticket items, anything related to homes, mm -hmm. because you know the home market is very weak now. And when you buy a house, you can't go buy a hardware store without spending two or three hundred dollars, right? Well, people aren't buying houses now, so that component of consumer spending is definitely down. Auto sales are also way down. So those big ticket items that we can put off to another day, those are seeing uh, some weakness now. Right, very frustrating. Now, Joe, being in the supermarket industry, you know it's hit you guys hard. How in particular has it affected grocery prices? Well, uh, the freight, mainly, of the, uh, the product coming into us. Uh, I just talked to a fellow today, a uh, uh, produce man, that uh, sent a truck out to California last week cost him $2,950 just for the fuel. Mm -hmm. um, he paid $4.70 a gallon to fill up his, his tanks at the, at the warehouse for diesel fuel. Uh, traditionally, diesel fuel actually has been uh, lower than, than uh, automobile fuel and uh, than gasoline. But right now, diesel fuel is higher. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, uh, the truckers are all complaining. And there are no food shortages the way um, some people have, have would lead you to believe I know that some of the box stores had some uh, uh, some problems with rice, where they were allocating rice. 
Well, you know, that has to do with the, um, the weakness of the dollar right now as well, because if they, have, if they have a shipment of rice coming in, they'd rather sell it overseas in Europe where they can get a bigger, a bigger buck for it than they can in the United States. And uh, it hurts us here. Sure. The weak dollar, I mean, uh, those are the two, two main factors that are affecting the price of food right now is the cost of fuel and the weak dollar. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, which makes it very tough for consumers. Yes. Now, Tim, I know you've been doing a lot of research and a lot of your stories have focused on this. You know, share with us what you know as far as high fuel prices and how it's affecting all of us. It's interesting how with the housing situation that you described that it seems like the wealth effect that we used to talk about just a few years mm -hmm. ago where steadily increasing house values made everyone feel wealthier so they would feel comfortable to consume more. It seems like the gas price situation has in fact reversed that for the factors that you just described. People feel like they have less and less money. They're not sure how much less money they're going to have in the future because the prices are only going up and it, it seems like there's a lot of caution out there. And a lot of the retailers I've talked to reflect that. I mean, they, they see people cutting back fairly Yeah, and I think the consumer confidence just came out today. And if you've heard, it's very, very low. It's at the lowest, obviously, because of high gas prices right. and high food prices. Joe, now, how, you know, food prices are very high. Two big essentials, you know, fuel and food. So what do we as consumers do? What are you guys doing to try to keep the prices down as low as you can? Well, actually, we're, we're trying to educate people uh, that now have to eat at home more more than they did before. They can't eat. At, they can't afford to eat out at restaurants as much as they could before. So let's learn to, to cook at home. Uh, we've been uh, we have a series running where people can feed a family of five for less than ten dollars, and it's not hard to do. And you can eat pretty well for under ten dollars for a meal of five. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're coming out with we've been coming out with uh, recipes on the air with uh, uh, different types of foods, things that people would never even dream of cooking that uh, are easy, you know, that uh, uh, a lot of times the, the uh, and, and I'm going to say women, but men too, uh, that they see a piece of meat or something, what do I do with this? You know, how, how, how does it turn into a chuck roast that I can serve my family? Right. We'll, we'll show them how to do it. The people don't know how to cook anymore at all, really. That's, that's <laughs> exactly right. That's exactly right, you know. Uh, may, so maybe in that, in that respect, it's not all that bad. Not only that, but you can feed a family of five for less than $10. It's, it, and it's easier than going to a restaurant. People save time by cooking at home because by the time you, you, you get to the restaurant, you use more fuel mm -hmm. and, uh, and sit down and have your dinner, wait for your dinner, so on and so forth, and get home. You can have everything cleaned up by the time in the same amount of time and save a ton of money. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and my understanding, too, is what you really want to do as um, consumers is almost go back to basics. Cook more, as you said, at home. Eat healthier foods, because that seems to be a little bit cheaper as well. Um, gardening might might uh, be a good thing as well. So there's there's a lot of options. And there. that's not bad. You but know, it's a good thing. But you know, Audrey, the the, the problem with the, the high energy prices and high, high uh, food prices is that these hit middle to lower income households most. Because right. the lower you down in terms you are down in terms of the income spectrum, the more you're spending on basics, such yeah. as food and energy. So this really is putting the squeeze on low-income households, fixed-income households, retirees, Which is very and, and, and so forth. Yeah. Why don't we take a break? When we come back, Tim, I want to address this question to you, and I want to get into more specifically the overall Pittsburgh economy and what, what the picture is compared to the national picture. Please stay with us. We'll be back in a few minutes. Hello, welcome back to Night Talk, Get to the Point. I am Audrey Guskey from Duquesne University, and it's great to have all of you here because we are trying to help you guys out. Obviously, the economy is tight. Families are trying to balance budgets. Households are struggling. And the biggest issues, as we've talked about, are fuel and food. We want to get into more specifically, how does the Pittsburgh market look compared to the overall national economy? Are we holding our own? What's happening as far as housing goes? And what are people spending? Tim, let's turn it over to you, because I know you've, you've done a lot of stories in this area. How is economic development here in the Pittsburgh area? How are we looking? Should we be concerned? Should we be getting optimistic? I think Pittsburgh, the, the old saw about Pittsburgh that, that Pittsburgh has always never booms but never entirely busts, that, I think that still holds. I think there still is some signs of, of growth, but I think there's probably a little more caution in, in the development field right now than there has been. Mm -hmm. This week, uh, next week, the big retail convention in, in, the, in Las Vegas is going to be held, and a lot of the people I talk to going to that are kind of not feeling that there's going to be a whole lot going on with that. I mean, there's a few projects and there's a few companies that are probably poised to do very well, 
but uh, over overall, I think it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of um, just kind of looking around and window shopping yeah. as far as developing new shopping centers and pushing forwards with new projects. Because we find that sales have been so stagnant over the past couple of, of I guess, months, years. There's, there still seems to be a lot, some commercial development going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. yeah, there, there was a report today that um, the housing market was up like 8%, but it was all apartments. No single family homes. I think f single family home construction was down like one and a half percent, whereas apartments uh, well, the, construction uh, was up. Well, the the trends in home construction are still all weak, and that that multifamily component that came up and led to a fairly positive report today is a very volatile component. And the overall trends, though, are still going to continue to be weak for months ahead. There's such an overhang of unsold homes out there. We've got about 11 months worth of supply out there, and that means if no one was allowed or no one was allowed to put a new home on the market now. It would take almost a full year to use up the supply of unsold homes we have. So that, that's quite an overhang, and that really keeps the construction very depressed. Well, is, that, is that the Pittsburgh market well, or that, that, That's nationwide, and, and I, I certainly agree with Tim's point about that old saw about Pittsburgh sort of not being uh, joining in the highs and also not joining in the lows, and that's exactly what we're seeing with the, uh, both the regional and the macroeconomic data. Because it seems like we're, uh, we're, we're not in as bad a shape as, as other areas. Oh, you're absolutely and, right. And like up in Cranberry, there's still a lot of construction going on in, single, in, in pockets, mm -hmm. I would say. You know, um, I mean, that's the way it looks to me, as, as not being part of the a, a whole national. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I know one of the questions that we're always being asked as experts in this area, are we in a recession? Are we getting close to a recessionary period? Tim, you're sort of like I'm smiling. not gonna. I'm not gonna answer you're that. Go they're gonna look at me and, and say you're with the press. It's it's all your fault anyway. So well, we're trying to be optimistic here. What, what well, do you think, Rob? I can certainly take a stab at that. And yes, I do think we're in a recession. And recession. What does uh, that mean to the average? That, that's a, that's a great question. There's a sort of a, a, a vernacular, a common definition of recession: two quarters of declining GDP. Okay. GDP being that big, broad measure of how the economy is doing. That's not a strict definition, though. And I think that we'll, we're going to see, in the case that we're in now, very much like in the 2000, 2001 recession, where we don't see those two consecutive quarters of declining GDP. We're going to see weakness in various industries, the U.S. auto industry, mm -hmm. housing markets, certainly the financial services industry in and around New York City, very, very weak. And we're going to see weakness in certain geographies, maybe the, <coughs> the Pittsburgh area doing fairly well. But if you're in Florida, if you're in Southern California, if you're in Phoenix or Las Vegas, you know you're in a recession. Yeah. How about um, debt? How, how's our debt ratio right now, Robert? Well, uh, when you look at, say, household debt levels, they are fairly high. And uh, this is called the financial obligations ratio, and we, we do track that. And that means consumers are paying for mortgages, you know, second mortgages, credit cards, mm -hmm. things like that. And that does dig into the amount of, you know, funds that they have available to spend on other items. And we all know that about two-thirds of the economy is really driven by consumer right. spending. Consumption accounts for 70% of GDP. So, so if they're not spending, we're, we're, we could That's right. Yeah. Well, over the past seven, eight, ten years, probably, people couldn't afford what they were spending. That's the way it appears at this point in time. Well, one of the reasons why, why we got into this place is because home prices were appreciating at such a rapid rate, and we're able to pull cash out of the house when we refinance those home equity withdrawals. But see, when we can't do that and, and what about this economic stimulus package? Is that really working? I mean, is that going, are people going to be spending their tax rebate? Uh, my understanding from statistics is about 20 of us are only 20% of us are going to spend it. Half of us are going to pay off bills, and 30% are going yeah. to um, save. So, so that doesn't leave a lot. Is, is that going to really push us? Yeah, I, I really do think it will, because here's the idea that I give you $1,000 to spend. Maybe you go and you put it on a down payment on a car, mm -hmm. maybe not. Maybe you pay your bills down with it. But if you pay your bills down with it this month, you're going to feel wealthier next month and spend a little bit exactly. more next month. Exactly, and that's month. what we're looking for right. the feeling. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make you guys wealthier. So let's take a break. Please stay with us. We've got a lot more information. We want to really give you an idea of what the Pittsburgh retail picture. And let's look at jobs next uh, segment. Stay with us. I'm Audrey Gusky. Hello, this is Night Talk. Get to the point. I am Audrey Gusky, and I'm thrilled to be with three brilliant, wonderful gentlemen tonight. We've got Robert Dye, who's from PNC Bank, Joe Dentisi, who's from Coons Market, and Tim Schooley from Pittsburgh Business Times. And we're having a very lively, energetic, exciting, informative discussion. 
The next topic I want to address is jobs. And I have a personal interest in this. Uh, my daughter, Yvonne, just recently graduated from Duquesne University. Fortunately, she's hired, I sort of hate to say who she's working with because it's a little bit of a competitor here, but she's working with Comcast Spotlight and we're thrilled that she's there. But being that this is the time, this is May, and you've got recent grads, you've got the summer employment, uh, kids, students looking for jobs, how is the Pittsburgh picture, how is the national market? They claim, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics just came out with something recently, and they say that in the Pittsburgh area we have 79,000 more jobs. And basically the growth is coming from education and health care, not really a surprise, professional and business services as well has increased and done significantly better even than the national market. And leisure and hospitality has also increased. Man manufacturing government jobs seem to be on the decline. But I want to ask our experts and see what they think and see where they see the growth is and, and give some ideas as to the job uh, market. Robert, what, what have you been seeing? Well, labor markets are definitely soft. We've seen four consecutive months of declining jobs and in the U.S. as a whole. We had about minus 70,000 through January, February, March, and April was a little bit better at minus 20,000. So job markets are, are soft. Unemployment rates are starting to trend up a little bit. Pittsburgh, you know, as we've talked about though, is still generating jobs, but not at a tremendous rate, but the job market is definitely softer than it was a year ago, and that's going to have an impact on graduating. Uh, students this year. Sure. Joe, what are you seeing? Uh, the service industries, uh, uh, retail, uh, we're always looking for people. And we, um, we uh, try to promote from within as much as we can. Uh, and that's, that's the beauty of it. Um, but we, we're always looking for people. The jobs are always there in the service industries. So. Well, we are a service economy, and so that's right. a good thing. Right. Tim, what types of, of factors are you seeing that are impacting jobs in this area? I guess I'll just be curious to see what happens that there's been kind of a, an expected wave of ret retirees to mm -hmm. be exiting the workforce and that would presume to create opportunities for young people again and we'll have to see how that plays out. I'm sure that'll be kind of a staggered effect over time. But right. yeah, as far as uh, more recent factors, I don't know, but I think that's the big structural question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I always try to be a cheerleader for the Pittsburgh area and, and encourage young people to stay here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one of the biggest, you know, we have an older population, but we want to keep, we have great educational institutions, Duquesne, of course, being one of them. Um, so, you know, what, what do we do? There's a vacuum of, um, of skilled people. I mean, uh, bricklayers, carpenters, mm -hmm. um, meat cutters in our business, uh, that, that uh, there, there's, there's always jobs available there. But it's work. I mean, you know, it's not um, it's not sitting in front of a computer. And I, you know, young kids that want to want want to be able to work, maybe they don't even want to. Maybe they don't want to go to college, or maybe they don't have the aptitude to go to college. There's jobs available in the skill industries. Yeah, yeah. But, and uh, like in our business too. I mean, right now we're in a growth spurt right now. So I mean, we're we're promoting uh, from within right now too. Great. Robert? Well, uh, I think this area can do lots of things to help it, to try and keep it. It's, it's, it's graduating uh, seniors. Uh, one thing that, that I think is paramount to keeping young families in, in areas is developing good school systems. And, and I know that the Pittsburgh area has lots of very, very good school systems. Uh, developing arts venues, cultural venues. Uh, the sports f facilities are, are world renowned here, and that's all great. Maintaining infrastructure, and all those things take money, and at the same time, we want to keep tax rates low, and that's where the tension is. We want to have all these nice services that everyone can enjoy, and we also want low tax rates at the same time so the businesses feel like they're in a cost competitive environment. Right, it's hard to balance a lot of yeah. times. Tim, are you, are you seeing any particular areas that seem to have more potential in growth? Uh, maybe spe in, within specific industries? It was interesting to see that Bank of uh, Mellon, New York has added, kind of quietly added 400 new jobs downtown as part of their, in the after effect of their merger. I thought that was a, a larger number than I guess I, I realized. Um, obviously healthcare, there's, there's huge needs for new healthcare employees and there's some, there's some kind of unsung smaller industries like there's What's going on at Carnegie Mellon with the uh, Entertainment Technology Center is really exciting. It'd be exciting to see some spin-off companies come out of that, and that's beginning to happen. I don't know how many jobs you can 
you can get out of that one industry, but there are lots of opportunities for Pittsburgh and, and a lot of smaller industries that I don't think get discussed very much. Right, right. Well, let's take a break. What I want to do uh, next is, well, let's go on vacation. Or let's see how many of us are actually going to go on vacation this summer. I'm Audrey Gusky with Night Talk Get to the Point. Stay with us. It's hard to believe it's mid-May already. Where is this time going? And obviously, people are all trying to plan vacations. Where are they going to get away? Even though the weather hasn't really been cooperative, what we're thinking is, come on, it's time. It's time for us to take a break and relax, a little R&R. &R. And are people actually going to be taking vacations? Fuel prices are so extremely high. They're claiming that airline prices make up about 20%, which could be very ugly. And a lot of travelers are saying they're going to be driving instead of flying this year. And also, they're going to be maybe staying with family instead of going to more luxury luxurious resorts or, or staying in hotels. That's a cue to my sister Jean who has a place in um, Jersey, uh, Stone Harbor. Jean um, marked me down for a vacation this summer. What are, are we going to be vacationing and what are some of maybe the options and ways to save some money uh, and travel tips? Let's turn to Tim. Any ideas, Tim? People are going to be, are they going to be traveling? Are they going to be vacationing? And if so, where and how? Well, we're going to a travel agent tomorrow to plan our, are you really? our honeymoon, but that'll be after the summer. So. That's great. But Any as far ideas as where you want to go? We're, we're looking at Mexico. We'll have to, we'll have to, to see. I don't know. Yeah. But um, it probably is. It pro there probably will be reduced travel on the shore. I'd yeah, and you're sort of going counter to what we're finding because a lot of people are staying within the United States to try to save some money, not a lot of uh, foreign travel. We'll see. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. Joe, any ideas about vacations well, we'll and what people are doing? Uh, well, as far as we're concerned, we'll probably get on to uh, Florida. My, I have a sister who lives in West Palm Beach. We're going to get to see her a couple of times a year, and uh, we'll, we'll go there. Much as, uh, you know, you hate airports today, it's such a hassle to go through an airport. And it's, it's much nicer and easier to be able to drive, but uh, that's a little too far. We'll probably take it. And especially with all the new baggage um, policies. Yeah. I don't know if you're all aware. Yeah. But now, for all the airlines, I think Continental starts next week, and Southwest hasn't off, you know, um, put this into effect, but $25 for a second bag. Mm. Uh, so it's, you know, they're nickel and diming us in a lot of times. With the, we don't get the meals anymore. We can't get the luggage checked in. We're going to have to pay <coughs> if we want to select our seats. So it seems like air, f and the prices are outrageous. What do you think, Robert? Well, I think there, there are two key effects we're going we're gonna to see. Uh, one is the foreign exchange rates. With the value of the dollar so low, I mean, we can't really, many people cannot afford to go to Europe or other places and, and, and spend their hard-earned dollars because they simply don't go very far. So people are going to take more domestic vacations, and because energy prices are so high, they're going to drive less to get there. So shorter vacations, closer to home, local events, and I think that really bodes well for places like Pittsburgh that can attract people from this area. Absolutely, because we've got so many beautiful places and venues in the local Pittsburgh area. You know, you'd think maybe probably that uh, people may go back to camping mm -hmm. instead, instead, of, instead of staying at a resort or uh, uh, go, go, go back to the more traditional vacations. Possibly, or, or like Robert said, shorter vacations, closer to home, uh, just enjoying the family. Right. Well, let's take a little vacation right now. Uh, stay with us. We'll be back in a few moments on Get to the Point. It's a hockey night in Pittsburgh. Oh, wrong show. And it isn't a hockey night, at least tonight it's not. But we've been thrilled and just mesmerized by the Penguins and the winning and the victories and all the records that they're breaking. The bad news is that the Pens lost to the Flyers. The good news is the Pens lost to the Flyers, if you really think about it that way, because we're bringing it back home. We'll at least have one more game at the arena in Pittsburgh, and I want to talk to the guests tonight about what does it mean to the Pittsburgh area? How much money is being pumped into the economy as a result of the Penguins' victories and overall sports in the Pittsburgh area? Tim, what are you seeing? What are you sensing? Are th is, do, do the Penguins, the fact that they're winning and victorious and heading hopefully to the Stanley Cup, is that, does that have a huge economic impact for us? I use is a strong word. It has a it has a, a real positive economic mm -hmm. impact. Obviously, the restaurants downtown and around the arena they're going to be filled and doing well at a time when they may may not be, which in some ways is more important because it's it's kind of found money for them. Uh, obviously, the any of the vendors that you'll find in the strip, I'm sure the strip will be more bit will be busier with people selling T-shirts and things. Um, 
it's obviously a feel good great thing um we'll we'll have to see how far they go yeah exactly now if you think about it when the steelers played in the super bowl the super bowl is not played in pittsburgh and it's only one game and, the, and there's less playoff games. So is it the fact that we have more of the games being played in the Pittsburgh area and we have more games actually being played? Is that a positive thing? Well, it definitely brings tourists into the area and, and hundreds of thousands of dollars are spent. And as Tim said, you know, hotels and restaurants are a clear benefactor of that. Uh, the city gains visibility, uh, recognition. Uh, Pittsburgh is known internationally for its sports teams. Sure. So these types of uh, uh, venues are very, very mm -hmm. important to establish yourself as a world-class or global city. But I'd also like to make a, a plug for the cultural and mm -hmm. arts institutions that are just as important. And that's a one-two punch that a city like Pittsburgh can offer both tremendous sports venues and wonderful cultural and artistic institutions as well. Absolutely, we seem to have it all. Joe, are you sensing a, a, a more sales in, in your grocery stores as a result oh, sure. of the Penn's Penn Well, we're, uh, uh, anytime that there's a playoff game, the, uh, you, know, you have a run on all the snack foods and so on and so forth. And we're selling a lot of Penguin product as well, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, uh, t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, uh, pen uh, Penguin authorized items. But um, uh, I think that it's, it's just the image that it gives the whole Pittsburgh region from the Steelers and the Penguins and hopefully someday the Pirates too again. We're getting there. <laughs> you know, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now, I mean, I think we should mention that sure, Tim went over the cultural side because should we tell them? Three months ago he moved here from Philadelphia. Oh. But he's a Penns fan. We, we were afraid to bring that up, but yeah, that's really true. He is now a Penns fan. Uh, yes. You have to be at least tonight, Robert. Absolutely. You know, I, I went to the, I, I had always wanted to do this. I went out to the big screen on Thursday night to watch the game because, you know, that's where Outside. the excitement was. Yes. Great. outside of the arena and it was fabulous but who was mainly there it was young people kids students and lots of young families and i thought you know what this is fabulous because penguins hockey it's a different it, it's a different generation than maybe the pirates or even Steeler fans because they're young, they're energetic, and I think this is, might be one thing that's maybe drawing young people or keeping them into the area. You remember too, the last last three years, I, I think it's the last three years, this, the arena's been sold out for every game. Yes. So, yes. I mean, that was unheard of for the Penguins in the past. And uh, and you can't even get tickets for the, uh, what are they, tickets are going for like $300, $300, $350 for the playoff games. And they're if you can get them. Yeah, if yeah. you can get them. But uh, uh, just the, the image that that all, uh, that all generates for the area, and now, with the new arena, uh, the changes that are taking place uh, all around Uptown, uh, I don't know if you've been through the hill lately, uh, all the things that are happening up there, uh, and, and it's not just from the Penguins, but mm -hmm. that helped it, that helped move sure. it along. The, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the YMCA is building a new Y up, up on the hill, and it's gonna, they're going to have their regional offices for the entire western Pennsylvania region. Wow. Uh, the, the steel is already up for a new Carnegie Library. Uh, there's there's a lot of changes taking place right now. Uh, the high rises are coming down, and it's being replaced with uh, uh, some row houses, single family homes, uh, and, and it's changing the whole area. Whenever right, they, right. they, uh, it seems as it's still up in the air what's going to happen to the uh, to the old uh, Mellon Arena, mm -hmm. but it, it's evidently probably going to be torn down. I would think, and it's still up in up in the air what's going to happen there. Yeah, I, you sound I, like you want to put a market up there. Well, we're looking at it, you know, I mean, we, we would consider it. We would consider really? it. Yes. That's, that's why we, uh, I know what's going on. Is anyone from the URA watching? Uh. <laughs> well, I'm thrilled that the uptown area is, is really expanding and growing and progressing because obviously with Duquesne having our home there, and we're all aware that we built the new power center named after the first president of Duquesne, Power, which is clever. It's a great uh, workout facility for the students. There's, uh, I thought there was a weightlifting power center. Well, it, it, it goes both ways, Joe. Also, we've got a Starbucks there. We've got Barnes & Noble, the biggest Barnes & Noble in this city. We've got uh, Jamba Juice, which to all the young people is fabulous and, and, and fun, and a, a new restaurant. So when you think about what the universities are offering, and I have to be proudly stating that we have the biggest um, youth population, young people's population, 18 to 22, in the downtown Pittsburgh area. So, you know, Putting supermarkets in that area would be mm -hmm. fabulous for us. Any expansion and growth is wonderful. Well, now look what Point Park's doing. I was just going to well. mention that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And and now you know as as you expand, you know, yeah, the redevelopment moves out from the Hill District. You're getting into Oakland, sure. and now UM, UPMC is coming in this direction, uh, and uh, uh, Pitt as well is is expanding toward 
toward town. Mm -hmm. And it should change that whole region. Uh, Duquesne Mercy Hospital is going to be expanding, from what I understand as well, right. since right. Uh, they were bought out by UPMC. Uh, it's uh, things are mo Pittsburgh's moving. Pittsburgh's on the move. It's exciting. Okay. It's I exciting so. to be part of Pittsburgh. Absolutely. And we are excited that you are here. Please stay with us. We'll be back. We'll take a very short break. Grab a quick drink, something to eat, and come back in a few moments. We'll be. This is Night Talk, Get to the Point, and that's exactly what we're doing. We are getting to the point. I have three of the best guests that have ever been on this show. I say it for the record. With me to my left is Robert Dye. He's from PNC Bank. We have Joe Dentisi from Coons Market and Tim Schooley from Pittsburgh Business Times. And we're just covering all the bases, literally, as far as the Pittsburgh area. We've talked about uh, the Hill District, and we've talked a little bit about downtown. Let's move to the north side and see what's happening there. We've got a new casino coming in. We've got some new growth coming in there. Let's talk about it. Joe, uh, tell us your ideas. Well, I, th I think it's going to change that whole area, the uh, uh, Manchester Woods Run area. We have uh, one of our stores is up on the, uh, up on the hill, up, mm -hmm. up from where the casino is being built. And uh, uh, it, it's not a bad area by any means. But this is going to bring a, 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 new, a new sense of direction to the area. Uh, once the casino is built, I believe. You also have the T going in, which is going to add a transit link. Where are they putting it? Yeah, into the north side, right? Oh, you mean the underground, yes. the under yeah. the river one? Yeah. yeah. Yes. But that's going to stop at the, um, uh, right at the, uh, at the, the stadium. stadium. Park, yes. yeah. 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 Which is a good well, thing, and that's another issue that we can yeah, talk about. From where that comes up next to PNC Park, can, can you, you're not going to be able to walk there from, to the uh, casinos, are you? I, I don't know. I'm mm. thinking you will be. I'm really? thinking it's all within walking distance. PNC Park, you know, Heinz Field, you know, and the see, casinos. That's one thing that Pittsburgh's lacking, though, is public transportation. You know, I mean, mm. wouldn't it be uh, neat to have, uh, the way they're talking about a high-speed train from the airport to downtown Pittsburgh to Monroeville to Greensburg, and be able to link that all together with a high-speed train or have uh, 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 a rail, rail service in the downtown Pittsburgh and have park and rides surrounding the city and the suburbs. Uh, I mean, that's, that's pie in the sky thing. We have this right mentality, now. I think, in the Pittsburgh area where people don't like to take mass transit. Other cities, major metropolitan areas, is it because they're forced to, no. or, or, or are we just too snooty to, to enjoy people riding? People have so Florida? much incentive to take mass transit now with $3.60 yes, and 70 yeah. cent gasoline. So yeah. uh, you can think of all the money we can save, not just on transportation, but on parking, on wear and tear, mm -hmm. on your car. So. Uh, and I'm seeing it. I do take mass transit uh, into town, and I prefer much over driving. And it's, uh, it's a, you know, it's, it's very convenient. Good. You know, Robert, you, um, what, what type of trans? We can learn from other people. You know, uh, what type of transportation system do they have in Philadelphia? Well, they have a whole mix, and and and, and I think that is the advantage. They have buses, subways, regional tr uh, rail systems, light rail systems, and of course the, the Amtrak going all right through Philadelphia. So it's it's a nice mix. And that is one thing I noticed coming into Pittsburgh is you don't have the choices, yeah. but you do have a very uh, well-developed bus system uh, that does serve you know tr tremendous amount of service throughout throughout the area. So I don't know if you remember way back when, uh, uh, whenever Tom Forrester suggested this goes back in the '60s, uh, suggested Skybus, and they had they had a short ra uh, short line built out in South Park. And it was supposed That's to be right. the prototype of what was going to be. That's right, but it never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Tim, any forecasts or ideas about mass transit and what's happening in this area? I think it'd be interesting to tabulate all the money that's been spent within the city on parking garages mm -hmm. and and see how much money you how much that money could have been invested into establishing something like light rail. It seems well, like we only think of the solution in a, in, a, in one given area. We don't think enough kind of globally. You know, with, with, again, going back to gas prices, this may be a time to revisit this issue. If we're in a whole new regime, and yeah. I, think, I think oil prices are too high, maybe coming down a little bit, but not going down to where they were maybe five years ago. We're not going to see $20 a barrel oil again, I think, in our lifetimes. So this may be a time to sort of sit back and reevaluate this, those mm -hmm. issues and, and, and say, can this area benefit from more dedicated mass transit facilities? That would probably be the single most factor mm -hmm. that could help re revitalize the downtown area. We're creatures of habit as consumers, though, and it's so much easier to hop in the car and drive. And, you know, what, what will it take to get us... You know, using more mass transit. That, that's the mentality. Think of all the interesting people you get to meet. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but you bring up very good points because we're now forced to. With gas prices being so outrageously high that, that a lot of times 
people don't have that option. You know, to I don't think drive. we've gotten the federal funds that we should have gotten in Pittsburgh for mass transit the way other cities have. And maybe we just haven't been aggressive enough to go and after it. I don't know. Maybe, or maybe we haven't used them as effectively as we. True. Could. And yeah. comparatively, gas prices seem high, but a hundred. If you talk about a hundred dollar barrel oil that like tabulates to like 15 cents a cup you can get like a happy hour beer for I mean that's really mm -hmm. comparatively I mean it seems high and it's painful when you pay for it bump yeah. Well, well, hybrid cars are being sold more so than ever, and my understanding is if people would drive just a little bit slower, if you go 10 miles an hour less, you can save about $500 for the average family. Um, slow it down, Pittsburgh. We'll be back with you in a few moments. Hey, Pittsburgh, let's celebrate. Pittsburgh, let's celebrate us. I hear we're having a birthday. We are celebrating 250th anniversary, which is great. And a city can never be on enough A-lists. Did you know that just this week, the Auto Vantage selected Pittsburgh as the city with the number one most courteous drivers? Oh yes, that's us. And as a lot of us probably know, last month Forbes selected us as the number six city out of the top 10 for the technology cities. We had last year, Frommers selected us as, for the year 2008, one of the top 13 travel destination areas. We all know that last year we were selected as the most livable city by places rated Almanac, which was our second time around 22 years ago, Rand, Man Rand McNally selected us. Also, about two years ago, we were selected as the smartest places to live. Now, I didn't say smartest people, but I also believe that that's true. Smartest places to live because of our um, culture and uh, the beautiful neighborhoods and the tree-lined streets and all that we have to offer. One bit of bad news, we were selected this month as the sootiest city in the country, but we can argue that because the instruments were placed in the Clareton area where it's the Clareton Coke Works, which is the largest Coke plant. So it was a little bit biased. But what I want to do is turn it over to our guests as we're concluding tonight's session and talk about what, what does Pittsburgh have to offer? What are the beautiful things that we do? And what are the wonderful benefits and the beautiful people and features and venues and all the different things that makes us so livable and so wonderful? Robert, since you're the newcomer, share with us your newcomer perspective. Well, this is all very fresh in my mind. I've been just with PNC since last August and relocated here to Pittsburgh since January. Mm. So I am very new to, new to the area. And I am just amazed every time I drive around the city at night how beautiful it is. I mean, that's, that's the thing that really hits me first and foremost. It is a gorgeous city. The city of bridges, the rivers, the architecture downtown, absolutely gorgeous. The institutions, we've talked about sporting institutions, mm -hmm. cultural institutions, educational. I'm seeing all of that, and I'm really appreciating this tremendous quality of life we have, the low cost of living, and the wonderful people here. Great to hear it. We're glad to have you on board, Robert, moving from Philadelphia. Welcome. Joe, what do you think? You've been in well, Pittsburgh all your life. Born and raised in Pittsburgh. Uh, my father came here in 1931 from Italy. and. Uh, had no, no desire, once he was here, he had no desire to go back to Italy. And he, he only visited there once in the whole time he was here until he passed away. But uh, our children are here. They're all in business with us. What a blessing that is. Absolutely. And uh, they all live 10 minutes away from us in the North Hills. And this is our home, and we intend to be here. If there was a better place that I felt we could live in the world, better than Pittsburgh, we would be there. We love Pittsburgh. And, and we, are we perfect? Is Pittsburgh perfect? No. But we're going to improve it. We keep making it better. And you know what? We thank you for being in Pittsburgh because you are providing us with alternatives. And don't get me started on Walmart or any of the big stores. <laughs> but you are, you are hometown, homebred. You are the guy who's, who's providing us with these stores and these options. And you are family to us. And we appreciate that because how rare that is in, in the um, economy anymore to have well, that option. Pittsburgh's been good to us. I mean, we, we grew the, to the seven stores and growing more uh, soon to be. Uh, started with the store on the north side over mm -hmm. on Perrysville Avenue and uh, Pittsburgh accepted us and we we try to return the favor as best we can. And I always recommend every time I'm on any show is shop local, shop Pittsburgh and shop Thank at you. Coons. Tim, uh, how long have you been in Pittsburgh? Are you born and raised here? I was here? born and raised. I grew up in Penn Hills. I, okay. I now live in Lawrenceville. I, one thing I would probably appreciate the most is just how compact the city is and the level of variety that you can enjoy within kind of a very, very kind of small area. And uh, yeah, I, 
overall, I guess the succinct way to put it is I just think Pittsburgh is a very easy place to be happy. Yeah. Now, do you, since we've all been in Pittsburgh all our lives, any must-see places we can recommend to Robert as to like what he should see and what he should do now that he's set roots here in Pittsburgh? You know, I've lived in Pittsburgh all my life. Never been on an incline. Oh, come on, Joe! <laughs> I have no idea either. You know what? We should we'll all and celebrate. And that's definitely on the list. It's definitely a, kind of a tourist <laughs> thing you to do. You have to do that. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely spectacular, the view. Any, any, <laughs> pl any other places? You know, it's funny because a lot of times, as Pittsburghers, we don't do all the things that the traditional tourists would do because we take them for granted. And, you know, whenever the strip district that I knew was a wholesale produce house, you got to get on the strip district. Oh, have you been to the strip district? Oh, we've been to the strip district and eaten at uh, Big Mama's House of Soul. It's great. <laughs> you haven't lived. Or Permanis, if you hit Permanis. Yeah, we've, we've done that. He's obviously been down to the uh, uh, Benedum and, and uh, the, you know, the cultural district yes, downtown. Yes, yes. So we've been to PNC Park and to the Phipps uh, Conservatory and... Uh, all, a lot of wonderful Pittsburgh well, institutions. Well, Kennywood's opening pretty soon. Matter of fact, I think it is open on weekends now. I think now. it is open now. Yeah. And that's an interesting twist because, as we all know now, it was family owned and operated for how many generations? Yeah. Now recently sold Spanish to a Spanish company. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully it'll, it'll stay in this area and be vibrant. That's a rarity that we have. The, uh, it's a unique small park. amusement park. Yeah. yeah. You know, a, a park its size will be able to maintain the way it has been. Yeah. Any other ideas that uh, let, let's share with our viewers, other, other ideas as far as Pittsburgh and what we offer? Let's keep our young people here. Well, I do want to mention one thing we haven't talked about, the great philanthropic institutions oh, in the Pittsburgh sure. area. And I have been involved with the Pittsburgh Food Bank and the tremendous work that they're doing there. Mm -hmm. And I'm very impressed by that and other places like the Pittsburgh Foundation. And uh, very impressive. Yeah. I think that's been a history with the melons and all, all you know, just the the beautiful sharing that people have had and Heinz and a lot of the big corporations here are still continuing that When language. you look at where we've taken Pittsburgh, all of us together, from the 1970s when the steel mill started to go down, mm -hmm. and where we've taken it from then till now, you know, you have to understand where we came from and what, what we've lifted right, the city right. up from. That uh, we've made a lot of progress and we're still going to make more progress in, in the Pittsburgh area. Yeah and how proud we are of the educational institutions that we have and the medical facilities that we have and, and the service industry which is expanding and growing and the high tech and the entrepreneurial spirit that we seem to have in the Pittsburgh area. We do have quite a lot to offer. It is just growing and blossoming and it's, and it's fun to be a part of Pittsburgh. And we always, hopefully, we've been cheerleaders all night for this, uh, for uh, the Pittsburgh. It's an region. exciting time to be in Pittsburgh. It is an exciting time. And we thank all of you for joining us here. It's been Night Talk, Get to the Point. I am Audrey Gusky, and I must say good night to my grandson, Jake. He helped me prepare. He's 11 months old, so he shared all his little views with me, and I appreciate that. Um, and to my students, I always have to say hello and good night, too. Take care. Please join us again next time. This is Audrey Gusky and the wonderful panel, Robert Dye. Joe Dentisi, and Tim Schooley. Thank you for joining us. This is Night Talk, and hopefully we did get to the point.